soy el fuego que... Welcome everybody to your Real Estate Sensei show. I am Sandra Jauregui Schwapitz and today our guest is David Pinzon of Pinzon Financial Service. David, welcome to our show. Very happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Sandra. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation today. I am very happy that you're giving us your time. David was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia, where his family had a development company and multiple business. His first job in the financial industry was at the age 18 of 18 years old. That is amazing. Congratulations for that. Where he worked for Seguros Bolivar in charge of a special cases. At the age of 20, he was forced to leave his hometown and move to New York, where he and his mother has to restart from zero. David went to school with a major and industrial and organizational psychologist psychology, and at the time he was the president of different academic clubs. David, you have an amazing story, and I will let you tell us first. Who is David Pisson, David Pisson, and where you come from, and a little bit about your background? So thank you so much, Sandra. As you were saying, I was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia. I moved here to the States when I was 20. Actually, I had my 21st birthday in New York City. And that was the first time I saw snow. <laughs> um, I got a scholarship for school. Um, it's funny because I got a scholarship in math. <laughs> and I was, it wasn't my first subject when I was in college, in, in high school. And then I ended up working with numbers. Who will have thought it? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> um, at the time, my mom, um, as I said, we used to have businesses in Colombia. We moved to the States for security reasons. Things like that happened. And we moved to the States and we had to start from zero. My mom and I, we, she was working. I was going through school. I didn't have to work. My mom was amazing. She was doing everything right. One day she got diagnosed with leukemia. And we lost everything again. And at that time, I was to take all the responsibilities of the household. I have my scholarship. I have my military contract. I have to pay the bills. I had to take my mom to the doctors and do everything at the time. Um, I love helping people. And at the time, I started working with the company, started working on finances, educating the different consulates around the city. I work with the, most of the Central America consulate and South American consulate, educating the community and the undocumented communities of the rights and different ideas they could do or use to take better care of their finances. And... Later on in 2015, I moved to Florida, where I became the finance director for Acura for the Southwest United. And in 2018, I'm just summarizing because there's so much. <laughs> it's over a decade. Of, and I'm a fully licensed financial advisor right now, so I'm allowed to have multiple conversations with families. And I'm passionate about it because in today's society, Everybody knows the middle class have been left behind when we talk about finances. Uh, how can you win a game if you don't know the rules of the game? Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. It's just um, when you said left behind, you're totally right. And um, the reason, uh, that's why the community has to be there. And um, it's very important that you have it in you and you're ready to help your community. So thank you very much for that, David. So what was one of your hobbies when you moved to Florida? Well, biking until I realized how dangerous it is. <laughs> <laughs> when you said biking, cycling, or when you said motorcycle? Actually, both, but cycling. I haven't got my... <laughs> but yeah, I... I sold my bicycle and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do this. People drive like crazy a little it's bit tough. Sunday. Yes. Yeah. I heard that I had a friend that had an accident. She was riding normal, but you don't know who's riding in the next in the other side. Exactly. So I use I like that. I like skydiving, scuba diving. So, diving. so I like to live life 
to the fullest so that way I can enjoy it and just say, man, I shall have tried that later on. <laughs> yes, it's true. So at a, very, at a very young age, you started your first job and then you had the responsibility to, to help your mom. Mm -hmm. How did you handle all that? Well, it's really simple. I was, um, I was forced to mature, and when you're forced to mature, you have only two options, either cry about it or move on. What can you do with the spoiled milk? Yeah. Just throw it away. So I was poor in a situation where I had to own up and move on. And you did it. Congratulations. I had to. No other choice. <laughs> So what difficulties did you go through and how did you cope with it? Well, time, time is one of the, I learned that time is the commodity that you can never replace. So, and you have to be able to manage it right. At the time I had to go to school, I had to work, I had to take my mom to therapy, to surgery, I had to do all those things to make sure the household and everything was taken care of. So taking ownership of time allowed me to graduate college, complete my military duties, take my mom to the doctors. And whenever you see me, actually my mom is my business partner and she works with me at the office whenever, and I was able to retire my mom. Oh, wow. That is really, really nice to hear that you accomplished that for your mom. And that it's uh, amazing that knowing about the education and knowing about what could you do with your finances at the early time, it can help you to retire. And we don't know that, we don't see that. No, unfortunately we don't, is that there's the labels, but we don't know how to find those labels. It's like when people, in the back of the cigarette box, there is caution, don't smoke, you may cause cancer. In the bottle says, don't drink and drive because you must cause an accident. The same thing happened with our finances, we just don't know where those labels are because we don't know the rules of the game. We don't know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. All we do, like, we're really good at making money. This nation is amazing at making money, but we don't know the rules of the game. And when you put attention to the numbers, Sandra, you see people in their 60s, 70s, retiring, broke, regardless of the income they have made. I have people that I know they make half a million, a million dollars a year, but they're 60, 70 years old, they're struggling to figure out what they're going to do at retirement. Because one thing is making a million dollars while you work. Another thing is making a million dollars while you're retired. Yes. How are you going to manage to do that? And that's the major problem we have. And then you say, well, David, you're talking about the million dollar earners. Well, the same thing happened with the $30,000 earners. It doesn't matter. It's only zeros at the end of your paycheck. What you're doing with it is that matter. Let me, I always ask people, what is the most important bill in your house? The mortgage. Right, most people see the mortgage. What else? The light, the bill, the water. All the bills. The cell phone. Like everybody nowadays have a cell phone and they yes. pay out of pay every month, right? Yes. Regardless who your cell phone provider is, Verizon, T-Mobile, I don't care. Just say you have a cell phone provider and you pay it on time for 40 years. Now you call your cell phone provider in your 60s, 70s and say, hey, I need $1,000 to buy groceries. Will they send you $1,000 or they'll just hang out because they think you're pranking them? Yeah, no, they won't. So the same thing happened with your life, the same thing happened with your water, the same thing happened with your mortgage. No, the most important bill is you, the person that you see in the mirror every morning. That's why you pay yourself first. That's the most important bill because that's the bill that is going to be with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. You are going to be living with yourself for the rest of your life. If you don't pay yourself, nobody else is going to pay it. Unfortunately, 50% of couples get divorced. Unfortunately, people pass. Unfortunately, we, it's something called life. But if you don't take ownership of your finances, Regardless of how much somebody loves you, you're going to be 60, 70, 80 years old. And if you have no money, how you're going to be able to sustain yourself? And most people is always thinking, man, I'm going to wait until I have 100,000. I'm going to wait until I have a million. I'm going to wait. 
And going back to what I was saying earlier, the most important currency we have is called time. If you have time, it doesn't matter if you have $1,000, $10,000, a million dollars. What you need to take is ownership of the time. And what is the best time to start saving or investing? What is the best time to start? Today. Hey. Because yesterday we cannot do anything about it. It's done. And tomorrow, we are not sure. Yeah. Today is the time we have to look. And in your industry, you work with people that they want to qualify for houses. They want to qualify for this. And when you look at DTI, debt to, in, debt to income, they don't know how to reduce the, 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 the DTI. They don't have a game plan to get into a mortgage and get out of the mortgage. They don't know when is the debt freedom day. They don't have a written plan to get out of debt. How scary is that? Very scary, but that's that's where the educator part comes. Where are those educators? Why and that's, why the people don't go to a, a financial advisor? Are they afraid of seeing reality? Are they afraid to pay a, a, a bill that possible is the most important bill, as you mentioned. It is the most important bill when you invest in yourself. But People are not educated that, sit, that when you sit down with a financial advisor, it's helping you of what you can do today. Well, I actually, <laughs> I use this as an analogy and it's a two-part answer to that. I'm going to start with the first part and then I'm going to elaborate on the second one. The first one is that we like to listen to the drunken cousin or the drunken friend of the friend that has no clue what they're doing. And we just love to listen to that person. So, for instance, let's say you have a broken tooth and you have to go to the dentist and you go to the dentist and the dentist says, well, I don't have my license. I don't have my certification, but I just watched YouTube for the past 10 hours. I'm ready to go. Right. Right. Would you put your mind to that dentist or so-called dentist? No. No, right? But we're looking for the help in the wrong places. We're meeting with people that have no licenses. They don't have, they, or they are called financial professionals, but all they have is a life insurance license. The life insurance license is just one of the licenses. You need to have your investment license. You need to have your mortgage license. I can talk about mortgage because I'm a mortgage license professional. And I'm registered with the board and I have all my licenses. So I can review a mortgage and I can tell you exactly what your market is and how it works. And that's the second part I'm going to get. Most financial or most fully licensed professionals won't sit with the middle class because they don't have the money to afford the services. So it's a two part. Is The first part is that we don't go and sit with the professionals. And we see with the people like, oh, yeah, let me watch YouTube. YouTube is a great entertaining platform. Entertaining platform. But it's not, it's not designed to teach you how to handle your finances. No. And then if you go to see with a professional, sometimes you cannot afford the solution. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do is that I strongly believe that regardless of your income, regardless of your status, regardless of the amount of sales you have in your account, you should be educated and empowered so that way you can take control of your finances and achieve your financial freedom. Because at the end of the day, that's why we come here to this country, didn't we? Yes. We came with American freedom. And the people that work and live here, they are enjoying freedom. But at the same time, we're giving away our freedom to death. Like there are certain debts, like a mortgage that you need to get, but you need to get out of them. Yeah. But at the same time, you're making money, but you're buying the last, the latest shoes. I see people with Jordans all the time. Like those are no shit. They're like a hundred, two hundred dollar shoes. And you ask them, do you have anything to save? No, I just go, yes, I'm going to buy new Jordans. Wait, what? <laughs> is not having the priorities because nobody ever explained it. And it starts with finances for our kids. How we ever break down finances based on their age group? Because you're not gonna teach microeconomics to a, a toddler. No. You need to teach a toddler, hey, hand, this is a coin, this is a bill, and then you move like when they're 
10, 15 years. Okay, this is a budget. I'm giving you $2 and you're, you need to save $1 and now you only have a dollar to budget for your candy. That's what, how you start teaching finances. They go to elementary, middle school, then you teach them. Perfect, now you, this is a bank account and this is how it works. And this is the interest and this is how it works. Then when they're getting into high school, you start teaching like, okay, this is investing, this is how it works, this is importance of it, this is retirement, but we're not doing any of that. No. So we are teaching people how to make money, but we're not teaching the rules of the game of money. How fair is that? That is, I, I, don't, I don't think that's, that's the right thing to do. And I always, always ask, how, what are we doing? Because like you said, that has to start from the young age. And if exactly. you don't learn as a young age, I'm not saying it's it's too late when you're an older person. You can actually get get the guidance. However, what would you do if you would have started at an, an, an early age, and you will, as a parent, obligation should be teach them. Exactly. How to do it. But if the parents don't know, and that's and that's where. Right. That it comes to the other part, like the parents don't know. That, so how can you teach something that you don't know? I have no idea about Chinese or Japanese, no clue. So yeah. how will I teach my kids Japanese or Chinese? Like, all right, what? no. So, and the problem with finances is that we make it seem like it's a major concrete jungle. Just picture that you're in Miami. You're driving in Miami. You're driving in New York City. You have big buildings, small buildings, and you have your finance. It's scary, right? And you got to a building and you need to get to the 60th floor. So 60th floor called retirement. And you're in the ground floor and you have two options, the stairs and the elevator. Which one would you take? The elevator. The elevator. But what is the elevator is given to us? It's called bank. And that bank doesn't have any cables. So where are you going? Nowhere. No. <laughs> yes. Well, but lost. <laughs> So there's a second elevator, it's called social security. Most people don't understand how it works. Most people say they are gonna receive it or not. It's a really controversial topic. But then there, we have also in that elevator, the corporate plans, pensions, almost non-existent anymore. 401ks is optional. So yeah. when people see that they have no other option, they go and open a business. Yeah. Or they become self-employees. Now. You have on your second elevator two cables. But fl floor after floor, you're putting more weight, more weight, more money, more money. What's going to happen with those two cables? I don't know. Explain me because I'm They're going to snap. They're going to snap over time because they have so much weight. Yeah, for the weight, yeah. So is it fair that those are the only two options are given to us to get to our financial future, to our 60th floor? No. There's something called financial planning and that's the third elevator. And in that elevator, you have a hundred cables, 200 cables. But let's say one of the cables is not, what's gonna happen? The other 99 are gonna hold you. But you have a financial advisor that have the licenses to get on top and fix that cable or replace it. If you could choose, which of the three will you pick? If you will pick always the, the one with the financial advisor. Exactly. But unfortunately, as you said, our communities are not being educated. No. We don't know much about it. Financial advisors is like, it's for them, not for us. Right. It's for they, not for I. It's like, I wish I have it, but I can't. Uh, is this information is like, no, it's not. Actually, it, when you actually start reading and all this is finances are simple. That's what I always say, people. It's like playing a game. As long as you know the rules of the game, you can win the game. Yes. Yeah. So it's not as hard as people make them believe on. It is hard when you're doing it by yourself. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go and be a self-investor. Are you familiar with those? Like, like they, they spend like hours upon hours in front of a computer trying to learn how to day trade, how to do this, how to do the other. It's kind of hard to win a battle when it's you versus them when you have the other financial advising company with yeah. a thousand, two thousand, three thousand analysts doing uh, analysis and reviews and, and all this 24 7. Who is going to win? You by yourself or the company with the 3,000 people? 
the company with the 3,000 people, obviously. So, and that's the other issue we have with the lack of education is that we want to do it by ourselves until it's too late. Like I go back to the dentist, especially in the Hispanic community. If you have a, a your teeth, uh, you like go and avoid going to the doctor and you go into YouTube, like you put things and you don't know what you're putting into your mouth. And then when you go back to the doctor, the doctor says, I'm sorry, it's too late. You just lost your tooth. You, well, you have come two months ago. All we needed to do was just patch it and you will be on your way. Now we have, so is that idea that we don't have anybody in our corners and we have, and that's what we're trying to educate the community or that's what we are trying to do in our company is educating, empowering, and actually making it simple to understand. That's great. It's but just, if, we if we don't know it, that, because listen, I'm, first time I, I'm talking to you, I heard really great things. And you, what you're explaining to me, it's reality. People out there don't know. And if you don't know, you won't even look and search. You go, like you said, YouTube, oh, I can do this, I can do that. But I think that the lack of education to the people is there. And what Pison Financial Service is doing to contribute to the community to educate the people out there. So I, I do seminars, I do face-to-faces, I do one-to-ones. My primary objective is educating and empowering the community. I understand that when families are educated, you can make informed decisions. If you can make informed decisions, you can actually be better off. Of course. Of course. So what we're doing is we're meeting with business owners. We're meeting, uh, are we working um, based on referrals? That way we don't have to ask for fees. We don't have to ask for any of this. Because the simpler we make it, the better we're going to have it for the families. Obviously. And then you will have also more attraction for, for your business. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'm very happy that you actually accepted to be part of the National Hispanic Real Estate Professionals chapter here in Naples, Florida. For us, you are going to be a, a big asset because you're going to bring education and our chapter it's all about education. That's our, actually our mission. And we, will, we are actually proud to have you and honored that you're going to choose to be part of our organization and um, give that part from you to our community. That will be amazing. Thank you very much for that. I know we, I have some other questions, but I wanna really tell you that. Thank you very much to give us that time to the chapter because I think that's one of the most important topics in today's um, life moment that people have to know what what is improving financial life and say the wealth, create your own wealth. And that's what I always tell people that I always warn them, warn them is there's plenty of information, but you need to you need to see it with a financial professional. You don't go to a heart surgeon and say, "Hey, I need a heart surgery," and they don't have a license, so they don't have the schooling, they don't have any of that. And the problem we are facing is many wannabes. They don't have licenses, they don't have professions. They just basically watch a couple of YouTube hours and they say, "Oh, I'm already a professional." No. So it's like you need to have a real estate license to be able to sell properties. You need to be a, a broker, a brokerage license to open your own brokerage. So the same thing happened with your finances. Sit with a professional that actually have the licenses and the support of an organization. Because you don't open a bank account in a corner store and you don't know if that corner store is going to be open next week. Yes. It's true. So tell us, what are some of the financial challenges we are facing today? Well, to start, the average household have less than $1,000 in an emergency fund. Especially here in Florida, if you have an AC repair, that's about $2,000. As a result, you have to swipe your credit card. 
and the average credit card is about sixteen thousand dollars in an interest rate of 24 to 30 percent and more scary is that eight out of every ten workers are living paycheck to paycheck there's a lot of month at the end of the check and it's extremely scary that the average American have less than $25,000, $50,000 save and put aside towards retirement. So the challenge is that 95% of the people living in the U.S. will fail when it comes to their finances. And only five will achieve truly financial freedom. That's wow. scary. Would you agree? That is scary. So, and that's what we're trying to accomplish, educating. Our mission is to help families become debt-free and properly uh, and financially independent. We want them to be educated. We want them to have the tools. And that's why the education is a pro bono service. We want them to be educated. The financial plan is also a complementary service. We don't want them to pay anything. We want them to have the knowledge. And... That's what we're trying to accomplish. We want them to have it. So that way, knowledge is not power. Apply knowledge is power. Yeah, indeed. So, I that. so I, what are the vehicles we can use to plan for our financial future? So one of the best things you need to do is create a financial game plan. First and foremost, we use a GPS to go shopping. We use a GPS to go to the movies. Why don't we have a GPS for our finances? important so that's the first thing because you need to figure out how much debt you have when are you going to be out of your debt how much money you're making and how much you're going to need when you're retired because knowing that now you can pick your vehicle because you're not going to go in a cross country in a bicycle <laughs> <laughs> no yes <laughs> you need a rb you need an suv you need a bigger vehicle at that time but first and foremost, you need a GPS to get you to give you an idea of the vehicle you're going to be using because everybody's having a different journey. People in their 40s is going to have a different journey than people in their 20s. And people in their 50s are going to have a different journey than people in their 60s. So there's different vehicles, but the primary objective is the game plan. What is your game plan? Once you have your game plan, you can select the vehicle based on your needs. And most of the time, people want a vehicle without knowing what needs they have. It's like a six foot tall people, a six, three, six, seven, getting into a Fiat. It's like Fiats are amazing. They're really cool. But can you imagine a, a six, five, six, seven dude getting into a, a small Fiat? That like, was going to drive it. How do I get there? <laughs> so, Vehicles are better designed based when you have your objective in mind and you have your game plan. So that's the best point of action. Once you have that, the government gives you incentives. The government wants you to plan. And they say, we know that 95% of you guys are going to fail and we don't got to get sued. They don't want to get sued. That's why they have labels everywhere. <laughs> so. That's why they also have incentives. They have IRAs, Roth IRAs, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs, solo case. They have so many different incentives for people to plan. Basically, the government say, please, we beg you plan because we know you're going to fail. Wow. So that is, that's amazing. So are there any resources that we can review that we well, can look There is something called investor.gov. It's basically the label page for the government saying to you, you're going to find me to sing Kumbaya and just say, hey, everything's going to be fine. But no. actually tell you the way it is so that way we can take course correction. If you go to your doctor and you're diagnosed with cancer, like thank God when my mom was diagnosed with leukemia, they didn't say, well, Miss Chris, you are having a mutation in your blood and things might go out of place and things might go wrong. No, they were like, hey, you got diagnosed with leukemia. We had to treat it and we need to get you right. So we were able to save my mom's life. Yeah. So you don't sugarcoat certain things. You need to be polite, but you're not going to sugarcoat like, hey, you need to take action. If you don't take action, you're going to fail. And, and that's the other issue is that we want 
to be sugar coated. We need to be told the truth and actually take decision and start acting. The sooner, the better. Yeah, yeah. And you said it's investors.gov. Investor.gov. Gov. Investor okay. It's I really so, and also you can go into my website. It's davidpinson.com. And you can set an appointment with me. I'm fully licensed. So I'll, I'll be able to sit down with you guys or sit down with anybody that wants to get in contact with me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions, create a game plan, actually help you understand your finances and actually help you build a portfolio for you to either enjoy your future or your assets where you can actually leave a legacy for the next generations to come. That, that's actually the ultimate goal, right? When we have kids, yeah. have them in college and our grandkids to be able to go to school. Uh, how many of us remember the name of our grandfathers or great-grandfathers? Yeah. Not many because they didn't leave many things behind. So what if we can actually build something that is a term that is normally done here in our community. It's called transfer of wealth. What if we could do that? Yeah, it would be amazing. And that's um, one of the 10 disciplines of the National Hispanic Real Estate Professionals where it says creating wealth. And that's something where you, your company comes for. And I'm very happy, like I said again, I'm, I'm going to repeat it, very happy that you will be part of the organization because that's one of the, the most important disciplines that we want to teach to our members and to the community. And that's why we're here. So very, thank you very much, uh, David, for your time. This topic is so amazing that I would love to come back if we can do it in Spanish, because remember, oh. we have both people here and I would love to do it in Spanish as well. Sería un placer y un gusto por completo en realidad. Thank you. Either way, I would love to do so, either in Spanish, English. I love helping my community. I, I, I'm passionate about giving this knowledge to our community. And Thank you. Thank you, David. We're very happy to have you. Um, for everybody, every Fridays at one o'clock, we're here. I'm very happy to have David. David, thank you very much for all your knowledge, your time, and we will see you again for the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.